Once upon a time there appeared in the world a king named Zuleyman Sak. His queen was a young woman, and they gave birth to him a year after their wedding. When the prince was born, he had signs of nobility and happiness on his forehead. As soon as he learned of the birth of his heir, the king was very happy and gave a generous reward to the first person to tell him the good news. He was extremely happy and happily ran to see the baby and kissed his forehead. Amazed by its unusual beauty, he raised his voice to read a poem by a poet. Oh Allah, please teach him to become a lion, lord of the vast lands, and turn it into a star that shines in the sky. Let those who sit on the throne tremble at its birth. Let all nations be afraid every time it appears. Dawn and number 39. T. Lock it in a golden cage or a pearl rack. But put it on horseback in the middle of the grass. Just let him practice resting on the saddle. Take it out of your mother and number 39. S. Breasts as soon as possible. To drink the enemy and number 39. S. Blood the air will grow up quickly. Meanwhile, the midwives and nurses were huddled around the boy. They carefully swaddled him, applied elixir to his eyes, and took him to his mother to nurse. People gave the boy a flattering name, Tagi al Muluk Haran, which means Haran and number 39, S. Laurel. The prince grew up surrounded by his mother, in luxury and happiness. Years passed, and Tagi al Muluk turned seven years old. The king invited scholars and wise men to teach reading, writing, various sciences, as well as the laws of wisdom to his son. After several years of diligent study, the prince has mastered the knowledge that only learned people can have. When he had mastered the sciences, the king invited an experienced warrior to teach him the art of horsemanship. The prince also mastered this technique perfectly and became a brave knight. At this time the boy was fourteen years old, but already had a noble appearance and elegant soul. Every time he appeared, people had to admire Allah, the creator of beauty and perfection. Nearly sixteen, the prince and number 39's face was rosy and bright, peaceful and prosperous. He is tall, has a well-proportioned body, and acts quickly but gracefully. Tagi al Muluk began to have close friends. Those who were befriended by the prince were very attached to him and fervently wanted him to become the heir after his father King Zuleyman Sak passed away. Prince Tagi al Muluk loved hunting so he never missed this pastime. But his father, the king, did not encourage him and forbade him to regularly hunt to avoid wild animals and other disasters that could fall on the young man at any time. However, the prince did not listen to his father and number 39's warnings, but delved deeper into his hunting hobby. One day, he ordered his servants to prepare food and provisions needed for ten days. The servants quickly completed everything so that the prince and his entourage and servants set out to hunt animals. After four days of walking without stopping, they arrived at a green meadow. There are herds of antelopes and chamois, many green trees with sweet fruits, and gurgling streams with clear water. Let and number 39. S. Spread the net here, tie both ends tightly together and start hunting. The prince ordered. Everyone prepares for the chase. The job was done as expected. They spread the net in very wide rows to chase away. Just a moment later, there were many deer and chamois running away in fear. At that time, they released the dogs and falcons and they flew away like arrows. They captured many rare animals, only a few escaped.
After a successful hunt, the prince and his entourage stopped by a stream. He brought the hunted animals to share. Most of it was sent back to the palace for his father, and the rest was divided equally among the people accompanying him. Then they spent the night there. In the morning, a caravan passed by and also stopped by the stream not far from the prince and number 39's tent. You guys go over there and see which company it is, and why did they stop here? The prince sent his servant. Hey guys, who are you and where do you come from? When the horse galloped near the caravan, one of the prince and number 39's knights loudly acts. We are merchants and stopped here to rest. The people of the caravan replied, Our home is very far from here, and we chose this meadow, because we trust King Zuleiman Sak very much. And your son? We know that in the realm of Zuleiman Sak, the lives of honest people are preserved. We have many precious fabrics to give to Prince Tagi al Muluk. The people who were sent immediately returned to report to the prince what they had seen and heard at the merchants. If they have goods for us, let them bring them here. The prince decided. Of course they can and number 39. T enter the city until they show me all their goods. Next, he got on his horse and went with his attendants to the caravan. The merchants bowed to the prince, wishing him happiness and success, gaining many victories and glory. The servants built for the prince a tent made of red velvet, studded with many jade and many other precious stones. In the middle of the tent was a chair sitting on a silk carpet. The prince sat down in a chair, surrounded by courtiers ready to obey his orders. The prince sent someone to call the merchants to bring the goods. The merchants came immediately and displayed their goods before the prince. The prince stood up, walked around and picked up what he liked, paid a very generous price, then got on his horse and prepared to leave. Suddenly the prince saw a young man in his prime, dressed luxuriously, with a noble appearance, and a face as clear as the full moon. But the young man and number 39's face was filled with sadness, and he looked pale like someone who had just had to separate from his lover. Seeing the prince looking at him, the boy sighed deeply and sobbed, his eyes filled with tears, and his lips mumbled a poem. Separation seems to have no borders. All sadness tears my heart apart. Dot. I broke up with her on an unlucky day to stay alone with a sad heart, to now have to wander alone. After saying that, the boy hiccuped again and burst into tears until he lost consciousness. Prince Tagi al Muluk looked at him and was very surprised. When he regained consciousness and realized that the prince was standing near his head, the young man quickly knelt down and kissed the ground in front of the prince. Why Don and number 39, T you show me your goods? The prince acts. Your highness, the young man replied, I Don and number 39, T have anything worthy of your highness? No. I want you to show me everything you have, and tell me your life story. I see that you have cried and your heart is filled with pain. If you are angry, I will punish the person who made you angry. If you fall into debt, I will pay the debt for you. As soon as I saw your house, pity welled up in my heart. Then, by order of Tagi al Muluk, a wooden chair studded with ivory and gold was brought. A carpet is also placed in front of the chair. The prince sat down on the chair, invited the young man to sit on the carpet, and said, Now, show me your goods. Please Don and number 39. T force me to do that, the young man begged, My goods are not worthy of your highness. 
It and number 39. S okay. Just show me what you and number 39. They got. Tagio al Muluk pressed. The prince sent his servant to take out the boy and number 39. S goods for him to see. Hearing Tagi al Muluk give such an order, the young man sobbed, tears flowing and lamenting his fate. Even though he didn't and hash 39. T want to, the young man still had to open the goods to show Tagi al Muluk. Bale after bale, bundle after bundle. Finally, he pulled out from his pocket a set of brocade clothes embroidered with gold, worth 2,000 gold coins. When the boy opened the clothes, a tiny bundle fell out of it. As quickly as it happened, he grabbed it and hid it in his chest, and it seemed he had forgotten everything in this world. Tagi al Muluk was extremely surprised by the young man and number 39's behavior and did not know what that strange action meant. Seeing the young man hiding the small bundle in his chest, Tagi al Muluk immediately asks, What are you hiding? Your Highness, that and number 39's a handkerchief that you don and number 39's t need it all the young man exclaimed. No, show it to me. The prince ordered. Your Highness, I don and number 39. T want to introduce my goods just because of this thing, because I can and number 39. T show it. And I want to see it right away. Tagi al Muluk said and looked angrily at the young man. With tears streaming down his face. The young man felt sorry for his fate, sobbed and pulled out the towel. He took the handkerchief and read the lines of poetry with his mouth. Don and number 39. T scold him. Don and number 39. T give in. He does an and hash 39. T listen to people and number 39. S bad habits. Don and number 39. T. Wait for a romantic date. He stays away from the dust of human life. A life of hardship is the cause of many disasters. It robs us of our happiness. Drink a dose of poison and wait, so that each person can raise the cup to the end. When the young man finished reading the above stanza, Tagi al Muluk asked him, I see that your life is very sad. Please explain to me, why did you cry when you saw that scarf? At that time, the young man spread a towel in front of the prince, on which were embroidered two gazelles, one embroidered in gold, the other in silver. On the antelope and number 39's neck is a necklace studded with pearls. Tagi al Muluk looked at the scarf and admired the skill of embroidering those images. He said, Glory belongs to Saint Allah, who taught people such sophistication. Impatient to know the young man and number 39's hardships, Tagi al Muluk said, Now tell me your story. Your Highness, said the young man, My father is a famous businessman and Allah did not give him other children besides me. I have a younger sister and my uncle and number 39's daughter. I and she were educated together in my family because her father passed away early. Before he died, he promised my father that he would marry his daughter to me. One day, my father said to my mother, and quote, This year it is time for us to hold a wedding for Addicts and Adixa to bind them with a marriage agreement. And quat. So my parents started preparing for the wedding. Taking care of everything necessary for the wedding party, my father decided to draw up a marriage agreement right after the Friday prayers. He announced this to his friends among the merchants and citizens and invited them to the wedding feast. The mother also invited relatives and relatives to attend. Next Friday, the God and number 
S family decorated a large room for the party, cleaned the marble floor, then spread the carpet and brought in the necessary utensils, decorating the surrounding walls with colored fabrics. Brilliant color. Those invited gathered at the God and Number 39 S house after the Friday ceremony. God and Number 39 S father ordered the tray to be brought out. Everything is prepared, all that remains is to complete the marriage agreement. The mother gave the god a wedding outfit made of rare fabric and sent him to the bathroom to bathe before the festival. After bathing, I put on beautiful new clothes sprinkled with fragrant spices, then prepared to go to the cathedral, but suddenly remembered that I had to go to my friend to invite him to testify when signing the marriage agreement. I intend to come find my friend and then go to the cathedral during prayer time. But I didn't and hash 39. T no. I was lost on a street where I had never been before. Coming out of the bathroom, I felt hot and uncomfortable, because I had to dress in heavy new clothes, soaked in strong perfume. To rest for a while, the god sat down on a stone bench at the beginning of the street with an embroidered towel spread out. That day it was very hot, sweat flowed down my forehead like a stream and the magic towel sat on top, so I had nothing to wipe my face with. I was about to wipe my sweat with my sleeve, but suddenly a white towel fell next to my feet, smelling of perfume. It is so wonderful that just by touching it, the patient is cured. Picking up the scarf, I looked up in surprise to see where it had fallen, and my eyes met the eyes of the person who embroidered those pair of antelopes. Never before have I seen a face as beautiful as the one looking down at me from the bronze barred window. When she saw that he had noticed, she put her index finger on her lips and then on her chest, then disappeared behind the bars of the door. The god stood frozen because he was bewitched by her face and eyes, without hearing a word or understanding the meaning of her gestures, and the window was carefully closed. I stayed there until late afternoon, but heard nothing and saw nothing more. Preparing to leave, the god picked up the towel and unfolded it. The scent of perfume enveloped me, evoking a feeling of joy, making me feel like I was in paradise. From the handkerchief fell a piece of paper, also anointed with perfume, on which were written the following verses. Oh. Wonderful curls of hair on a rosy face. Only nature has endowed you with eyebrows. His birth made the moon jealous. With his sharp beauty, he made many people ecstatic, fierce like a lion playing with its prey. After reading the poem, I was fascinated by false dreams and sweet wishes. Hiding the towel and piece of paper in his chest, he hurried back home without predicting what disaster it contained. He did not return home until late at night. Her cousin was sitting and crying. As soon as she saw him, she stood up, quickly wiped her tears and warmly welcomed him, kindly asking about the reason why he disappeared. Without waiting for me to answer, she told me that many luxurious people had come to my house that the judge and witnesses had been waiting for a long time to sign the marriage agreement. But then the guests could n and hash 39. T wait any longer and everyone returned home in a bored mood. Father was terribly angry because you disappeared, she said, and swore that we would not be married until next year because he had spent all his savings on it. The wedding failed today. Brother, tell me what happened to you today. Why didn't n hash 39? T you come home on time? And quat. Little girl, it and number 39. S best not to ask what happened to me and quat. The god replied. Then, because I could n and hash 39. 
T. Hide it. I told her the story from beginning to end. About the scarf, about the antelopes, about the paper with the poem on it, and then showed those things to her. Dot. She read the poem and tears streamed down her cheeks. I didn't and hash 39. T. Pay any attention to that, because my thoughts were directed towards the person who threw me the towel. Oh, how I wanted to see her again, to bind my fate with her forever, to become her husband and to be free from my cousin. After a long period of acquaintance, I had the opportunity to enter the garden, then enter my lover and number 39. S. House, capture her heart and be close to her. She was so beautiful, her name was Cruel Delilah. Every morning, I came to Delilah and ate, drank, joked and enjoyed the pleasures of love with her, then only returned home late at night. One day, when I came home, I saw my cousin crying. Putting her hand on her chest and crying, she read the stanza. The wanderer has struggled to reach out, had to separate from the warm family scene, to enjoy the flowers of the meadows in the land of hygiacs, making her heart shine, and rivers of clear tears, ready to extinguish the fires burning the desert. Having finished speaking, she turned back. When she saw the god, she wiped her tears with her sleeve, smiled and welcomed him. Trembling because of her excessive submission, I used my foot to step on her chest. She fell over and hit her head against a pillar. Her forehead was cut and blood was pouring out. But she didn't and hash 39. T cry and wasn't and hash 39. T angry with me. Waking up, she burned a piece of rag and sprinkled ash on the wound, then bandaged her forehead and wiped away the blood on the floor. She acted like nothing happened. Having finished, Adixa approached the god, smiling and saying, And quat, dear brother, pray to Allah, even in my thoughts I am not angry or laughing at you. I and number 39, am too busy with myself, because my head hurts. Obviously I needed to bleed, so that happened and my head won and number 39 t hurt anymore. Having finished speaking, she caressed him and calmed the god and number 39's anger. But her kind words did not cheer me up at all. Far away from Delilah, who gave me the magical scarf, sadness and pain, desire and resentment invaded me. Occupy the soul of God. My cousin served me dinner. But I kicked the tray with my foot, causing the food to splash all over the floor. And quat, a person who is in love is like a person who is suffering, and quat. The god said, if he is separated from his lover, he will be bored with the food, and sweet dreams will not be worthy of him. And quat, dawn and number 39. T be sad, Adixa said gently, pray to Allah. All my actions only prove the depth of my feelings for my lover. Having finished speaking, Adixa stood up, tears streaming down her face, picked up the broken dishes, cleaned the floor and told the story to the god. Continue reading part 2 of the old story. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.